Are you stuck in a rut of negativity, stress, depression, poor health? So many of us are, but the solution to these ills is attainable, and it's found right here in your mind. On this episode of Insider's Health News, we talk to hypnotherapist and spiritual teacher, Dr. John McGrail, about the tools and techniques you need to change your life for the better. Don't miss this exclusive interview. On today's Insider's Health News, we welcome Dr. John McGrail, clinical hypnotherapist, self-improvement expert, and author of the new book, The Synthesis Effect, Your Direct Path to Personal Power and Transformation. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. McGrail. I'm delighted to be here, Kim. Now, I think we could all use a little bit of this uh, personal power and transformation, speaking for myself, absolutely. Um, now, as a self-help book, I think yours really relies on this ability to heal ourselves and change our own circumstances. And I think that this is true of hypnotherapy as an industry. You definitely recognize the power that the mind has over our physical and our mental health. So how would you describe this particular therapeutic approach? Well, this is really a combination, and that's the reason I call it synthesis, because it, it combines a variety of methodologies and traditions and disciplines, from cutting-edge science to techniques that have been in use for thousands of years. Uh, we utilize the power of the conscious, logical part of our mind, and we tap into the enormous power of the subconscious part of the mind, mm -hmm. which is the biggest and most powerful part of the average human mind, and where most of our behaviors, attitudes, beliefs, and emotional patterns come from. And when you, when you bring them together uh, in the right combination with some very powerful tools, uh, basically the, the, the process establishes understanding. That's the first thing. So people, my clients and readers, will learn how and why they are the way they are, where their issues came from, how they develop, and that is power in and of itself. Uh, I, a metaphor that I use very often is, is your car engine. If your mm -hmm. engine starts to break or sputter or backfire and you know how it works, it's much easier to fix it. If you don't know how it works, even if you have the best tools in the world, where are you going to start? Right, that's, so that's true. That's what synthesis is about. First, we establish understanding. Then we provide a set of tools to use to create the change, whatever that may be, and then a method through which to use it. And because it combines all these traditions and methodologies, both conscious and subconscious, logical, cognitive, and more abstract and creative, for most of the folks that I work with, and I think most of my readers, they'll find that change happens very quickly and profoundly. Mm -hmm. It seems like a very effective system, just understanding how we work. It, ma it makes sense. You talked about some of the issues that we're experiencing, and one of the ones that you reference in the book is this, what seems like a natural tendency to expect the worst in life. You know, we complain about the weather, work, relationship, friendships. We, we feel like it's, it's just us against the world. Um, now, where did this idea come from? That's a very big question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Quite frankly, it's as old as, as civilization in a way, and, and we really have to go back that far. When we evolved as modern human beings, we discovered the concept of what I call contrast. We discovered mm -hmm. that there was this thing called control and comfort. And, of course, the more comfort and control we got over our environment uh, and the more we, we developed, the more we wanted because life became easier. You know, for instance, we got free time. We learned how to grow crops, so we didn't mm -hmm. have to spend all our time just hunting and gathering. And as we evolved and as it continued, uh, human, animal, craves comfort and craves ease. And that's, that's mostly ego-related, and I think you'd admit we all have egos. Oh, absolutely. And over the course of millennia, really, that's become sort of our, our uh, prime modus operandus. That combined with the fear of the unknown, which is mm -hmm. a hardwired... Um, evolutionary uh, trait of human beings, of all creatures, actually, uh, has sort of has sort of uh, really engendered this feeling. And if you think about mass consciousness today, look at the news or the newspapers. We don't hear very much positive stuff. Yeah. Everything is about the disasters of the world and negativity and lack and lack and more lack. And so that's where it comes from. Uh, it's very easy to look at the dark side of the equation rather than the light side. And part of my process is to switch that thinking. Hmm. 
become more optimistic. And I think, I mean, we're guilty of it as a, as a media outlet. We do cover some of the more negative stories, and it seems like people definitely feed into that. So it's just a matter of bucking this trend is what you're saying, and then we can tap into that more positive approach. Now, how do you suggest we buck this trend? Where do we begin? Well, the first thing that everybody has to realize, and this is one of the first things that everyone I work with realizes and or, or that I teach them and in the book, is that we literally create our own reality, and that's being mm -hmm. scientifically proven in the world and the science of quantum physics and quantum field theory. So the very energy of your thought or thoughts, your behaviors, has an effect on your environment. And again, this is not conjecture, and it's not metaphysical anymore. It's hard, laboratory-proven scientific experiments has proven that the power of our thoughts have an effect on our, on our environment. So mm -hmm. if you're predominantly thinking negative thoughts, if you're predominantly stressed and fearful, which I think are sort of the norms in our society today, then you tend to generate more of that. There's a, an old law called the law of attraction, and it's very popular these days in books and movies like The Secret and whatnot. And basically what it says is, that what you put out, you're going to attract back. And we know, again, this is science, it's physics, that the natural flow of energy in the universe is an energy of attraction. Mm -hmm. Like attracts like. Birds of a feather flock together, so they say. Uh, and so we say all the time. And so basically it's up to each and every individual to decide, hey, since I'm creating my own reality, whether I know it or not, it doesn't feel that way, but that's, that's the truth then I have the power to create the reality I want. And it really does start at an individual level. You have to decide to take complete responsibility for your life, mm -hmm. for the changes you want to make, for any of the issues you have. And in that moment, when you take responsibility, that's when the process begins. And then, of course, it's just a question of learning, of practice, and these techniques that I teach uh, and the tools I use help that happen very quickly. Mm -hmm. But it really does begin on an individual basis taking responsibility for how your life's working, and then making choices that allow you to start attracting the energy and the results you want rather than the ones you may have been, become used to. And yes, it's a big buck because mass consciousness is all about negativity in Western culture today. Right. I hope that, I think it's changing, and I think it will because uh, it must, but right now that's sort of the way we are. And it's also caused by a huge imbalance in our energies. Mm -hmm. And th these are just small steps that you outline in the book that we can take to regain this positivity, whether it's just surrounding ourselves with different people, not these negative groups. I feel like that, that happens a lot. We tend to, to feel comfortable around people who are like-minded. Whether they're negative, that's a huge problem for us. Um, now, one idea that you emphasize a lot in the book is this concept that life is supposed to be fun. And I love that, Dr. McGrail. That's, you know, that, I would love to live my life like that. Um, but wouldn't some argue that this isn't really realistic in today's busy society, to just have fun? Well, it depends on how you define having fun. And I take great pains in the book and with my clients in the clinic to talk about what that means. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, it, when we think of fun, we think of partying and we think of recreation and play and, and that sort of thing. And that's not really what I mean. Uh, what I mean by life is supposed to be fun is that it should and can be mostly a positive, joyful process. Mm -hmm. In other words, you should, an individual, we all deserve to have a life that is fulfilling so that when you wake up in the morning, you're looking forward to the day so that what you do for a living is something you actually enjoy and something that actually helps you utilize your natural talents and abilities so that the people that you're associating with are people that are like-minded, that you actually like to be with. In other words, you can get to a point where your life worked really, really well, and that's what I call a life of fun. Abundance, joy, happiness, health, and wellness, that's everybody's birthright. There's no reason anybody can't create it. Right, and the idea that you are more productive if you're enjoying what you're doing, it, it absolutely makes sense. Uh, one of the other things that I found really effective about your book is that you're taking these rather abstract concepts, like our chakras and energy flow, uh, that a lot of people don't, as much as science backs them, they don't really know if they exist. They can't see them. They can't prove them physically. Uh, but you really take them and translate them into really sensible scientific models. So can you briefly touch upon some of these? Sure. Well, the concept of chakras uh, dates back about 4,000 years mm -hmm. to the ancient Hindus. Chakra is a Sanskrit word that means focus or loci. In other words, there, in this tradition, there are seven energy centers 
located throughout the body, starting at the base of the spine and going up to the top of the head. And each one of these energy centers corresponds to both a physical and emotional spiritual energy. Now, interestingly, uh, again, modern science, because of technology, has developed the ability to actually take pictures of the chakras. So they are proving scientifically that this concept exists. Wow. Uh, and mm-hmm. what I've basically done is, is taken the ancient knowledge and wisdom and combined it with the modern research that's going on as to uh, the physical and emotional correlations between issues because, they, you know, again, scientists have proven that there is not a physical disease on the planet that a human being contracts that doesn't have some emotional psychological component to it. Absolutely. It's called the mind-body connection, which mm-hmm. Western medicine has for most of its existence ignored but mm-hmm. is now recognizing you can't separate the mind and the body and so this whole concept of chakras and energy flow is uh is key to our existence because that's really all we are is energy and what i've done and i don't know how unique it is is i help people understand their energy by thinking about it in three streams the physical energy is the energy of your body that's your your vehicle that takes your consciousness through this lifetime. I have a friend in England that calls the body the space-time suit, which I really like. <laughs> Great. Very clever. <laughs> yeah. And then you have your, your emotional energy, which is the energy of you, Kim, or me, John, the ego. And that's the part that gets most of us in trouble because the ego is, is situated or resides in the subconscious part of our mind. It never gets past about three years old. And so like any three-year-old, it will continually... Uh, try to get out of the playpen and get us in trouble. Right, right. And then the third energy stream in my system, or the energy streams, is called the spiritual stream, and that's really our essence, the essence of our consciousness, the essence of our soul. It's the most mysterious because it is invisible, Mm -hmm. and it's also, according to tradition, the most powerful part of a human being. And so my whole process is about balancing and integrating those three streams. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, here's another abstract concept, and that's this ultimate goal of enlightenment that you speak of. And I know, again, in Western society, a lot of people say, oh, enlightenment, that's something reserved for yogis and monks. But you say it is attainable for most everyone. So what's the key to enlightenment? I talk about practical enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And the word practical is a big one because what I mean by that is that, first of all, As I mentioned before, everyone deserves a life of health and wellness and happiness Mm -hmm. and abundance. Mm -hmm. Everyone deserves that equally. No no one's more entitled to it than anyone else, but we're all equally deserving of it. And it's definitely doable. Once you learn how to manifest and control your reality, once you learn to balance your energy streams, uh, what happens is your, your life continues to improve. And so what I define as practical enlightenment is living a life virtually free of suffering. Virtually free does not mean it's free. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are human beings, and there is always going to be the dark side and the light side, and contrast is the number one concept that guides a human existence. Absolutely. And so it's never perfect, but it can be amazingly consistent so that most of the time you're living really well, you're feeling really healthy, and you're having that life of fun that we talked about. And mm-hmm. in my definition, when life gets to be virtually free of suffering, you have achieved practical enlightenment. And it's very doable. And mm-hmm. it doesn't take very long to achieve. It really doesn't. Right. And just understanding that stuff does happen. There will be deaths in life. There will be illness. Uh, but it's how you deal with them, how you cope with them and overcome. And a lot of that you speak to in this book. Um, While I have you on the phone, Dr. McGreal, I really want to take this opportunity to plug some of the benefits of hypnotherapy. Uh, I know you you also deal with issues like addiction and weight, and recently we covered a story, I don't know if you're familiar with it, about lap band hypnosis. This is convincing people through hypnotherapy that they've received the weight loss surgery and consequently helping them lose weight. So what's your take on this approach? It's getting mixed reviews. Well, you know, it's interesting, Kim. My take is this, anything that works is fine. Mm -hmm. And nothing is perfect and nothing is 100%. So if lap band hypnotherapy works for a given individual and that individual successfully loses weight and gets healthier, who cares? Right. You know, it's like past life regression. A lot of people don't believe in it, a lot of people do. And whether or not you believe in it or not, the interesting thing is it's a very powerful therapeutic tool. Many people, not everybody, 
get great results from doing such uh, techniques. And so in my view, anything that promotes wellness, anything that promotes a person making healthy choices and creating that life of health and, and well-being and abundance and joy, which we're all entitled to, or deserving of, excuse me, <laughs> Uh, whatever works is fine, and that's one of the reasons uh, I think synthesis, my, my process is so powerful because I use a lot of different tools, I use a lot of different techniques, and I think the, the key to it is that uh, it helps a modern Western thinker, which we all are, understand, and then it gives them, through hypnosis and meditation and some of these other cognitive tools and techniques that are part of the process, it gives them a tool set and a, and a process through which to use the tool set to create that change. And, and the thing that I think is most spectacular about this therapy is that it just proves the power that the mind has over the body. You know, this is concrete evidence that you do have that ability to heal yourself, to change your patterns, to change your life through your mind. So Absolutely. That, Nothing that's happens in the body that doesn't go through the mind. There is no physical condition that doesn't have a mental, emotional, psychological component. And because, as I tell my clients and my readers, hey, it's your mind, you own it, and here's a way to, to make it work the way you want it to rather than the way it's been programmed to, and that's really the key there. And I think for many, many people, because it was written for the Western thinker, the modern Western thinker, which we all are, mm -hmm. um, our society is stressed, it's distressed, it's isolated, we are obese, we are anxious, we are angry, and we see it every day, 24-7, and it doesn't have to be that way. Right. Um, and that's, what I, that's why I wrote the book, to help as many people as possible find their way back to that, that, that life of fun, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's a great lesson, great lifestyle. So thank you so much for your time, Dr. McGrail. Uh, you can find more about the doctor's work on his website, drjohnmcgrail.com, as well as hypnotherapylosangeles.com and thesynthesiseffect.com. Until next time, from all of us here at Insiders Health, we wish you luck in your quest for enlightenment. <laughs>